Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE studios here in New York City at the New York Stock Exchange. This is our new CUBE East location. We're opening up our access point, our point of presence. We call it our super node, where we're going to have a subnet of New York content coming in. A lot of AI leaders here, a lot of technology innovation going on in New York. It's the city that never sleeps. Of course, we have the Silicon Valley Palo Alto studio connecting Palo Alto and Silicon Valley with Wall Street. Powering business, technology is changing everything. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. You see behind me at a big IPO today. And we've got a great guest. Uh, welcome into theCUBE here from the NHL, National Hockey League, Grant Nodine, and SVP of technology. What better way to kick it off with the NHL and theCUBE talking technology and video. <laughs> Grant, thank you for joining me in our new East Coast studios. Not a bad backdrop here in the uh, in Very NYC. cool, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like the Stanley Cup here every day. Um, the action here in NYSE is just like, it's always playoff time. Yeah, kind of, and I won't even say less violent. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's all good here. <laughs> Phenomenal uh, studio. Um, you guys at the NHL, again, I love hockey, so just to get that out of the way. So when I watch games, whether it's uh, me going to a game in Las Vegas, which is a game within the game, or the Boston Garden, or M at Madison Square Garden, Fan experience is always great, but when I watch it at home, I want to get that vibe, right? Video becomes part of it. The apps are now out there. You're doing a video production. You guys have a deal with AWS, Amazon Web Services. We've got reInvent coming up. Talk about what you guys are doing on the tech side, because video is an innovation opportunity for NHL. Oh, uh, yeah, a Take us through what you're working on. Lay it out for us. Well, you know, so I think we've been really diving in on live cloud production, because I think we, we think that there are a lot of uh, things that come out of that that are not only about just cutting a live game in the cloud, but mm -hmm. also about building components that can be used for a yeah. lot of the other parts of the business. So in other words, uh, you know, having a supercharged highlight system that allows you to use 15 different camera angles instead of the standard four that most trucks are recording. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, we have the opportunity in the cloud to build a scale for yeah. a broadcast that we can't, that, that it's very difficult to pull off in yeah. trucks that are all heading towards that you know, 15 year timeline in their <laughs> lifetime, right? A lot of these trucks were built in the HD era yeah. and, and uh, you know, they're, they're getting pushed harder than they ever have before. Yeah. And being able to really scale in the cloud has been a revelation in terms yeah. of the capabilities it gives us, but also the, yeah. you know, the, the, the understated thing of yeah. making it a more sustainable kind yeah. of uh, environment because you're not using all of this energy to power a big truck in the venue. Yeah, um, yeah what's interesting is, is that um, the infrastructure of the truck is a big part of the production we were just talking about the NYSE here. They have the most state-of-the-art equipment, okay, because they get the best production values, but we stream in the cloud, okay? So what you're doing is you're combining the best front-end operating experience of visual capture yes. with cameras and technology like here, and then using cloud to make it faster. Is yeah. that, am I getting that right? Yes, I mean, uh, you know, we, we've, got, we've got about 15 cameras in every venue that are that are the NHL's yeah. specific cameras. Now some of them are are dedicated to to goal reviews because they're actually physically in the net and using wireless frequencies to get signals out of. Um, but a lot of them are, are really meant to yeah. serve serve multiple purposes, both mm -hmm. to provide officials with key views of of certain areas of the ice but also to augment the things that the rights holders bring in and, yeah. and, and, and use to broadcast the game. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you've watched yeah. plenty of hockey games over the year, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, you're used to the idea that you've got that one kind of key game camera that is taking up probably 80% <laughs> of the broadcast. Yeah. And we think that there are a lot of options that we can explore in the cloud that bring about different ways to view the game. You know, I did notice that over the past couple of years that you guys have been facing this in because the playoff coverage always was exceptional. Why? Because there's more cameras. <laughs> and then now we're seeing that kind of playoff quality angles yeah, on well, all games. You know, the thing is, is that, you know, during the playoffs, you, they, they, the rights holders are bringing in multiple trucks to support their yeah. broadcasts it's gotten to be like playing tetris getting them parked in the <laughs> uh, in the you know the truck bay area of the the venue 
Um, but it, you know, it's it's really interesting how they've 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 kind of solved some of their challenges in having a bigger show yeah. by just adding more more gear to the situation. We think we can yeah. really make that bigger show happen in the cloud at a much more economic yeah, so way. Just, let's get this, I want to get to the cloud because that's really fascinating because I think this is really one agility and cost savings because of just all the physical costs. But real quick, on the NHL, you got all the cameras, you got reviews, you got to have the cameras. Are you guys mounting all the cameras? You got to go to the arenas. And well, then, so generally speaking, most of the cameras that we have in there are either fixed in the net um, and we, we put a, a fresh battery in the uh, tran transmitter in the yeah. net and we have fixed kind of wireless for, for getting those signals. I have fixed cameras that are over, that are hung up in the rafters over top each net. We do have uh, cameras on each blue line that we put out uh, at, on game nights, but we try to avoid camera, having fixed permanent. camera systems that can't be permanent, that we Got have it. to take up and down every game. So it's, it's part of the deployments, like when they change the ice at basketball one day, hockey the next. So you yeah. guys are very modular. Okay, cool. I want to get that out of the way. Make sure I got that on the record. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm I'm very excited right now about looking at very at higher resolutions like 8K. Yeah. I think if you you know if you see hockey footage that's natively 8K, uh, you will you will finally have a TV experience that reflects yeah. what you see at the arena. Yeah, and, my, and with my Ray-Ban glasses on while I'm walking down uh, uh, Madison Avenue. <laughs> I mean, this yeah. AR is coming. We could go yeah. on a whole for a whole thing there. Video sets the table. Let's get into the cloud production. Okay, so you got AWS. What? Are, take us through how that progression went. What was that workflow like? Yeah, I mean, think, honestly, yeah. it was it was a story that was kind of uh, several years in the making, really, because uh, you know the the initial part of embracing the cloud for doing anything is really a a lot of work about orchestration and basically deciding what it is that you want. To what infrastructure it is you want to stand up in the cloud and being able to control it programmatically. Um, so like that was a you know like a a solid year or eighteen month journey getting that system set up so that on any given game night we have a schedule driven automation system that brings all of this cloud infrastructure up and takes it all down. Now right now that was meant to initially that was meant to just move all of the traditional broadcast signals that were coming out of trucks in all of the venues yeah. to different distribution partners. Yeah. Um, and to really enable both capturing those as streams for internal use, but also being able to make those available to the, uh, you know, the, the partners that we have around the world to, to actually take them to uh, air or create streams out of them or whatever it may be. And, and so one of the benefits that we saw initially when we embraced uh, cloud production was I have a, essentially a replay system that has every other game feed sitting there in the cloud ready to be used. No truck in a venue can yeah. really replicate that without paying a significant amount of money for occasional use fiber to get feeds from other venues. And that's good for, for subscriptions too when you start getting into user behavior. Right. Yeah. I want to watch the game, but I'm a little bit late. Start from the beginning. Jump to the. Re I mean, is that some of the areas we're seeing? This. Well, I mean, I mean, linear I, TV know, is. Not, I mean, to me, streaming is just linear TV on the internet. Yeah. I mean, I mean what does even linear TV even mean? Well, well I mean, Amazon has just, uh, you know, started. Uh, you know, Amazon. Prime has just started streaming a coast-to-coast -coast show in yeah. in Canada this season that is really kind of born yeah. out of that idea that we have all of these feeds already resident in the cloud in a way that's it's kind of a lot easier to imagine building out a system like the NFL Red Zone channel and building that entirely based in the cloud and being able to really offer the fans a, a whip around show around hockey that, that, that just is really compelling. Do you have that now? Yes, that's a new, that's a new, uh, a new thing. That, is that a new season. feature this year? Yeah, now right now it's in Canada because um, okay. that's where I that's where my VPN then to Prime get the Canadian is. VPN. Yeah. I want that service. That is a great product. 
Uh, I love yeah, the I mean, whip I, around. I, I think Show me all the highlights, nifty moves and goals. Are you kidding I, I'm me? I'm really looking forward to kind of yeah. seeing after <laughs> after a month or two what the you know what the, the you know the fan reaction to in Canada is to that. I'm um, sure it'll be pretty strong. Yeah, I mean, the I, red I'm zone's sure, proven sure it will. that people really want to come in. If they don't have a lot of time, they'll put stuff on demand. They'll see the goal, uh, watch the games. Uh, yeah, I mean that—that's what I think that is the greatest power of the cloud is, is that we yeah. can actually now go meet the audience where it yeah. is, right? Because the audience keeps fragmenting itself along generational lines and technology lines and things like yeah. that. And so, being able to deliver content that's that's tweaked. To really yeah. be able to to meet a, the goals of a yeah. particular audience or the, the desires of a particular audience, it's pretty powerful. I've interviewed Andy Jassy many times. We're still friends. I, it's like we go to a Kraken game every year. He's the owner of the Kraken, part owner of the Kraken. That's, uh, a, that's a very fun building and, to watch and, a game uh, in. It's fun to, to shoot, shoot the breeze with. But he's always said one of the, his tenants as a manager is you got to do experimentation. And having that agility in the cloud to me is huge. And so just so I wire this up right, you guys built your own stack on AWS, yes. technology stack. Yes. That took some time. It's now up and running. Yes, and you're doing and, and video so we, we, we are, we editing. Have, is the playout system? Take us through what is yeah, in that so, stack. So, so there, it, we haven't done master control playout. So we haven't done the full on Nielsen decorations and things like that necessary to go to air. Yep. Uh, we've tr traditionally, you know, had a, a partner that we work on with that God, okay. for that for ad hoc things. Um, Generally speaking, most of the RSNs, the, you know, the traditional RSNs have their own playouts scenario and they don't need that from us. Um, but ultimately, it really was, uh, we, we, this summer, we really bolted on the ability to bring up and down replay systems, graphic systems, a, a cloud-based switcher, um, and, it, and it really gets interesting because you start to see, hey, I've got a replay system in the cloud. And you can start to see how you can reimagine how replay works league wide. Yeah. You know, so each venue goes and puts a, a replay system in to run clips on their Jumbotron. Each of the yeah. trucks has their own discrete replay system. Now, most of the trucks are operating with, a, you know, an EVS that's got six channels four of which are records and two which two of which yeah. are playback and they they literally only have about four angles that they can cut highlights off of yeah and we found in the cloud that all of a sudden when we're pushing all of these iso cameras into the cloud to do a cloud production the other benefit we get out of is i now have a yeah. replay system you're scaling your replays that they could cut highlights with 16 angles yeah well, as many angles you can get, they can, you can, I mean, auto scaling is one of the best features of the cloud. Well, yeah, but you can also start to see how you can cut highlights for multiple distribution venues all in one pass with one operator. And you now, start, that's a game changer you know, right you, there. You, yeah, because you start to see now, they're just, what, they're just, well, I mean, think about what the average sports league looked like 10 years ago. You had a digital uh, highlights guy, and you had like yeah. a, a social highlights guy, and, and then you had a broadcast highlights guy, and you can kind of flatten that that infrastructure and create an, a, a more efficient operation if you wanted to. You the know? labor and the mechanics of doing it. I mean, scope that alternative, no cloud, you just laid out the labor assembly line basically. What's the back end, what's the mechanism? Truck is limited. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, so generally speaking, most, as I said, most trucks have six channels of, of uh, video record and two of them they use for playback. So usually yeah. they're only capturing, you know, the, the primary game camera and then three isolated uh, handheld cameras or rocker cameras, whatever they may be. Yeah. And you end up with a scenario where, yeah, the highlights are very, uh, you know, they're very consistent across the league because yeah. everybody kind of has the same, you know, the same tool to use. But we think that with the advent of, yeah, yeah. of AI, that we can use AI to help automate the process of cutting you're, you're highlights. In the, you're in the merchandise business right now. You're, you're video merch. You're doing, you're merchandising highlights. 
You have multiple highlights. Yeah, I mean, and and think about how you can treat that. You can have that system treat each output differently for different, uh, yeah. you know, for different outlets, right? So that you have a syndicated highlight that's targeted to a uh, an international audience. You could have a syndicated yeah. uh, highlight that's targeted towards stats uh, v- stats. Uh, crazed, you know, guys. Uh, you can yeah. have a, you know, a, betting's huge right now too. I mean, you, you data can, is data. Yeah, I mean, let's well, get in the analytics. Edge IQ. You guys got data. We are living in a data-starved environment, from the micro gambling to uh, fan experience. Yeah. To stats. I mean, I love stats. Well, I mean, I you mean, know, the, you know, the always the always the challenge there is to FanDuel is a listed how company. I dri- in the NYSC, how do I by drive the, the latency down so that the you know so that the uh, you know, the data and the video is roughly arriving at the same time. Yeah. Right? right. Because, you know, what would happen is in the past, you would have the data actually be a lot faster than the video you, arrives. You got, you got, a, you got, a, you're like a high frequency trading platform now. You got to watch the data latency because <laughs> the arbitrage, I, I can move right. Exactly. Speed of light to go right to the goal. I got it first. Well, you know, yeah, yeah you know. because you know what was happening. You know, initially is you yeah. know the 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 gaming companies were paying somebody to go sit in the arena with a phone and and live log the game <laughs> and and get data faster than uh, you know the, yeah. than they were getting it from the kind of the Your official job systems. Is to make that latency window zero. I want the official systems to be as small as uh, small yeah. a latency as possible, so that I'm not worried about yeah. guys sitting in the arena with a little phone logger yeah. uh, beating me. Well, there's a lot of noise going on right now. The closing bell's coming up, so it's going to come on very shortly, in about five minutes. Brent, great stuff on the analytics side. What, what's going on there? What are the systems you got in the cloud? Uh, share because this is, I think, a use case that one I want to learn because we are in the cloud. Uh, NYSE is on premise because they're got a business closed. I'm sure they'd be interested in that. Other people are interested in in video. Video is the storytelling mechanism. Sports are iconic. Very much so. You guys you know, are the center of the action. And I, 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 I mean, who would have thought we'd be talking about high frequency trading, <laughs> meeting meeting high frequency gambling, ch- technical challenges here. Yeah. Because this is wasn't a technology conversation for sports. Right. Now you have it, and yeah, then you have all these apps well, out there. there they, there's so much. There's been so much added to the number of statistics that we keep now, yeah. based on the addition of tracking, uh, yeah. the tracking system, both the chip-based and this year. You know, there, there, there's some new tools in that uh, that you know that will kind of reveal as they get a little more dialed in. But but you know, it's really interesting how the amount of data about what's happening on the ice has exploded. So video production converging in with analytics becomes a big deal. Well, and then also what what happens on the back end is, is that all of these systems, because they're all in the cloud and they're all sharing those same video assets that are that are being streamed there at near live, is that you know the the as, the uh, content portal that we provide to you know our our licensees and rights holders is able to eat the tail of any of the content creation tools that we put in the cloud, and then we get great user analytics for what resonates with our licensees and our rights holders in terms of what content yeah. they search for within that portal, to, yeah. so that they then go and surface that to their viewers. Yeah, and you guys can really uh, do a lot with that beachhead position technically. You got digital twin opportunities to simulate some stuff and provide digital experiences that extend beyond the game. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, uh, you know, obviously immersive is going to be a thing yeah. eventually, yeah. you know, and, and, and certainly there's going to be that. Uh, you know, I, I just think you have such a tremendous opportunity in the cloud, and by not being in the cloud, you limit your opportunities. Think think about what TV looked like 20 plus years ago when you wanted to to do a proof of concept of a new technology. It took you four months to get the the hardware that you needed installed in your facility, get all of the uh, cabling done, <laughs> and 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 you stand it up and. A month later, you're like, okay, I need to ship that back now, and we're done. Um, yeah, and and yeah. every capex every, cost, every OPEX year, cost. what are you what are you pulling off for for proof of concepts with different technologies? Yeah. It's just the pace the the pace of innovation was a, a snail's pace then compared okay, two, to this. Two two final questions: What have you learned in this process besides 
there's benefits there. Um, and then, what are you excited about? So, what did you learn in the cloud play that you're, and, and then what are you excited about going forward? I mean, mostly I'm excited about, you know, having all of these areas where we can really start to innovate and being able to actually go and use that video to discover more about the game as time goes by. Um, really being able to kind of mine it for insights that we weren't getting previously, um, you know, because yeah. let's face it, there, you know, the, a hockey game is a hockey game, but you, the, there is so much going on within that game that you yeah. just don't even, that even if you're pretty close to it, you don't, you, yeah. you don't realize, and and being able to expose that to people yeah. and seeing how it impacts people that are maybe not big fans initially, but get yeah. sucked into. The the, you yeah, know, little things the, like the moves this, they're making, some yeah. pivots. Or yeah, ships. I mean, interestingly, one of the you know one of the technology vendors that we work closely with on the live cloud production initially, um, you know, admitted to me on the side. I'm, I'm not really a hockey fan, but I I watched the you know the data centric uh, broadcast that we did. And he's like, I was fa I was in. I was fascinated. Like. Yeah. That sucked him in, and he wasn't, but, you know, he, had, he admitted closing he wasn't bell. a hockey fan. We got the closing bell going on. BMO closing the market. They'll hit the bell and then hammer the gavel. All right, Grant, closing the bell. NHL in the queue, closing the bell, closing the market today. Keep excited. Like I said, so always the playoffs here. So always the Stanley always Cup. Always the playoffs, right? <laughs> always the playoffs. Playoff time. I'm not going to shave for a week here. Um, great to have you on. Again, going, going forward, what do you oversee? What's your job? Explain real quick what you do. What is your purview at the NHL? What does SVP of technology mean? What do you, well, what do you, I mean, you know? I, I, I've been at the NHL for 25 years, so it's met, it, you know, over the over the years, my role has been, you know, a, a constantly kind of evolving thing. Uh, you know, right now, my my goal is really to work very closely with our key technology and and innovation partners to really start, you know, stretching our legs and being able yeah. to really go and supercharge what we're able to deliver to fans. Because I mean, getting fans yeah. closer to the game is is the one passion that's been underlying all of it. And and you deserve a lot of credit over the past de two decades. Hockey's moved from regional to national. I mean, I was just in North Carolina playing in a pro am in uh, in uh, at the SAS Championship, and man, the people are just there, hungry for their Carolina well, Hurricanes. I mean, I, I, I think mean, they just like I going crazy saw, down there. I think you saw I think you saw it in the playoffs last year. How how much. The you know the the sports fan base, yeah. not even just hockey fans, but generally sports yeah. fans in general, really gravitated towards the Stanley Cup Final and how yeah. just special it was yeah. from a competitive standpoint. People love hockey, standpoint. and then certainly the playoff. Like I said, it's playoff time here every day. Um, what's next? What's on the horizon? Obviously, you're in the cloud, so you got the you merchandising the content, you got new workflows, new. And what's the next big thing? You got the little. Test market in Canada, which is good, probably going to come to the U.S. My prediction, because that's a no-brainer in my mind. I mean, I we, I would say we're you know we're getting close to being halfway through migrating the entirety of our historical archive into the cloud and being able to kind of yeah. make that available to, to to licensees and rights holders initially, and then hopefully eventually to fans. Uh, you know, and I so think, I watch all those '70s games where Guy Lafleur beats the Bruins and Jerry Cheevers, and then the Islanders take the ring off their finger every time. I mean, come on, there's too many highlights. Like, give me yeah, the good I mean, ones. Well, you know, there, I mean, there, there could <laughs> low be... Low lights, I should say. Well, I, I think there's you know. going to be a lot of ways that people discover the history of the game yeah, that way. That's great. Uh, and it's great to be able to expose them yeah. to that because let's face it, not everybody was watching uh, hockey on UHF, uh, you know, when <laughs> the, the rabbit ears, you know, the tennis, yeah, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Single blade skates, no helmets. Uh, right. Almost no shoulder pads, right? <laughs> Grant, great to have you on the Cube. You too, yeah. great to talk NHL to you. NHL here on the Cube East at the NYSC. The innovation in the cloud, again, cutting edge video running a multi-franchise operation at global scale uh, in the cloud, but also serving distinct stakeholders. 
Hyper personalization will be one of the big super agile things that will come out of this AI revolution. Video is now coming into that era, of course. The Cube brings that to you. We have our cloud, the NHL has their cloud. Thanks for watching here again, QB, Silicon Valley, Wall Street together. I'm John Furrier, your host of the Cube. Thanks for watching.